Uh, Debbie, do you want to come forward? Let's pray together. We all know Debbie, she's a woman of God, so I encourage her uh, as she stands for some minutes with uh, a heavy load, <laughs> a blessed load. So God, we thank you for today. We ask that you open our hearts and help us to receive what you have to speak to us today. Lord, I pray for strength for Debbie. Let her speak uh, with your authority and boldness and give her the strength that she needs in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, church. Um, it is always a pleasure to be able to bring to you God's word today, um, and it's truly a privilege to be able to, to serve you all. Um, for those who are joining us for the first time, either in person or online, um, you are more than welcome. We love you, and we are here for you. Um, for those of you who are returning guests, then we just want to appreciate you. Thank you for choosing to do life with us. And to our ever committed members, leaders, and workers, um, you are loved and um, your reward is great. If you have never met me before, I will introduce myself. My name is Debbie, and I'm one of the leaders here at The Higher Place. Um, I am married to one man, your pastor, because one is more than enough. Um, and we have 2.5 children, Isaiah, Noriah, and then the one that is on the way. Can somebody give God a whoop whoop? Because the shop has officially closed. We're done. <laughs> We're done. And I know that wherever my mom is right now, she's like, no, just one more, just one more. But we're done. <laughs> we're closing shop. Um, it's, it's hard. It's hard to raise kids, right? I'm a thousand percent grateful for the opportunity to, to be a mother and to raise children, but it is hard work. When I tell you I haven't had a full night's sleep in five years, that's a lot of lost sleep. <laughs> um, but we'll get there, amen. Um, I remember when I was a child, one of the first Bible verses I learned was from the book of Ephesians. Um, it was from chapter 6. And if you, you know it, then you know where I'm about to go. Um, chapter 6, from verse 1 to 3. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may have a long life on earth. And I remember every time we were maybe a little bit mischievous or maybe we just weren't doing really, really good listening, um, we would always get a good talking to. And that talking would almost always consist of, you better honour your parents because that is the first commandment that comes with a promise. If you want things to go well with you, make sure that you honour your parents. And um, my mum would always end it with, it's not my words, it's the word of God. Um, I was relatively well behaved, I like, I'd like to think, um, but the others, they really got a good talking to, they got an upgrade when it came to, to correction, especially the younger ones. Um, we would have our aunties and the uncles come in and really sit down with them and open the Bible and really tell them about the importance of honour. Um, but all joking aside, um, there is a heavy weight to the word honour. There's a really heavy weight to it. I think we hear it, we read it, um, we even use it in our daily interactions. Um, but I wonder if we ever really take stock and ever really think about what the word honour means and the gravity of it. Um, according to the dictionary, the word honour has three or can be expressed in three ways. So the first way that honour is expressed is to have great respect or high esteem for somebody. To have great respect and high esteem for somebody. The second way it is expressed is the quality of knowing and doing what is morally right. And then the third way is something that is regarded as a rare opportunity um, or something that brings pride and brings pleasure. In the Old Testament, the word honour actually takes on the form of kabod. It's, it's kabod in the Old Testament. And that means weight or it means glory. And then in the New Testament, it takes on the form of timau, which is... Um, which is to reverence or something that is of personal value. So to sum it up, 
um, we can say that honour is to value, it is to respect and it is to highly esteem and to treat something as precious and to treat something as weighty and as valuable. Amen? Amen. Um, unfortunately though, in today's culture, where people are so easily offended, where people are so quick to judge, where people are so quick to criticize and so quick to condemn, it becomes a lot harder to see what true honor looks like. Um, it doesn't take much to be offended in the world that we live in. It can be something as simple as, oh, I didn't like the way that she looked at me or, you know, I've been posting on, on Instagram for a week and this person hasn't liked my post and we become offended. <laughs> we become, it's a real thing, trust me. <laughs> we become offended. So, um, you know, we live in, in such a culture where there is so much offense, where there is so much anger, there is so much bitterness and there is so much dishonor. And when we are called to live according to the ways of God, it can seem two worlds apart, completely different. Um, earlier we read um, from the book of Romans, so I'm going to read it again, but I'm going to read from the NIV um, translation. And it says, be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Um, the English Standard Version of the Bible actually says, outdo one another in showing honour. Outdo one another in showing honour. And I believe that honour is an admirable thing, right? It's admirable to be honourable. Um, it teaches us to build, it teaches us to esteem, it teaches us to value one another, it teaches us to encourage, but also it, it, it also teaches us to believe the best in other people. Whereas dishonour, on the other hand, um, it teaches us to treat people as ordinary, or to treat something as ordinary, to treat something as common, and to devalue it. Dishonour, ultimately, it tears down. Um, honour is something that we as individuals and as a church body, as a community, should strive for despite what our society says and despite what our society projects on us. So if you haven't guessed it already, um, today I'm preaching a sh very short message on cultivating a culture of honour. Can we just pray? Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we just want to thank you for this word that you are bringing. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would give us the wisdom, oh God, to, to understand that you would open our hearts, Father Lord, to receive your word this morning. Father Lord, would you use my mouth as a mouthpiece in the name of Jesus. We give this time and this moment into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The word honor is mentioned somewhere around 355 times in the Bible. That's almost um, one reminder for the entire year. And I love the fact that God doesn't keep us wondering about who or what it is that we should honor. I think the Bible is very clear on this and it teaches us to honor numerous individuals or numerous groups or even concepts. Um, so today we're gonna just visit a few of those groups and a few of those concepts and look at what the Bible says about honor. The first one we are to honour is God. Some, can somebody say God? God. We are to honour God. And the Bible points to various ways that we can actually honour God. Um, the list I'm about to give you is by no means exhaustive, is by no means complete, but just to give you a general idea or understanding of ways that you can honour God, that we can all honour God. So the first way that we can honour him is by spending time with him. We honour God by spending time with him. Last week we heard um, a message from Eddie that talked about relationships and talked about our hearts. And when you find somebody for the first time, somebody that you, that you really enjoy spending time with, somebody that you are interested in, you're going to go all out and you're going to pursue that person. And it's the same thing with God, right? Um, we pursue that active relationship with him. We pursue his love. We pursue his affection. And it's, it looks like things like reading the Bible, uh, maybe praying, worshipping. We take the time and the effort to spend time with God. And when we make God 
um, priority in our lives. We are showing him just how valuable he is to us. We show him just how valuable he is to us. So spending time with God is a way that we can really, really start honoring him. And the second way we can honor God is by living a life of holiness. Can you say living a life of holiness? <clears throat> um, 1 John um, chapter 3 from verses 6 to 7, it says, no one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Now notice that it says anyone who keeps on sinning. So we are all born into sin already, right? We're born into a world that is full of sin. We are sinners. But there is a difference between continuing to live in sin purposefully, um, but, you know, sinning as in you make mistakes we will all make mistakes we are all human and we're all subject to failures and we're all subject to faults but living in sin is completely different so we start honoring god when we decide to completely turn away from sin it's turning our backs on what we know is wrong it's turning our backs against what we know that god dislikes so we honor him by turning away from sin and making a conscious decision and placing in the effort to no longer be held captive um, by it so that means that there are some places that we just won't go. That means that there are some things that we just won't do. Some groups of people that we just won't hang out with. And um, there are some things that we just refuse to look at all because we know that our lives have been committed to God because we know that we belong to God. We belong for, some, for something greater. We have been set apart to live a holy and a sacrificial life to God. And so we honor him by living a life of holiness. The third way we can honor God is by giving, by giving. Now we understand that everything that we have, whether that's physical, whether that's our intellect, um, whether that's our capabilities, everything that we have, we've been given that by God. There are a lot of people who desire to do things. There are a lot of people who desire to, to go to work and they can't, or they desire to get out of bed and they can't. They can't feel their legs anymore, or you know, they've, they've lost their mind in one way or another. There, there are many things that could have kept us bound, but we're here and we have that ability. Um, we've got a lot of professionals and different people in the building. We've got doctors, we've got nurses, we've got physios, we've got accountants. All of that wisdom that we've received, it comes from God. It's not just by our own doing. And so we honor God with all of these things. We honor God by giving. Um, Deuteronomy 8, 18, it says, it is he that gives us the power to get wealth. It's God that gives us that power to get wealth, not because of ourselves, not just because we desire it, but it's God that actually gives that to us. Um, Proverbs, Proverbs 3, um, verse 9, actually says, um, Honour the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your, of all your crops. So we honour God by giving to him because we recognise that he's given us everything in the first place. Amen. Amen. And then lastly, I've put here that we honour God with our worship. And it's so much more than just singing. It's so much more than just kind of waving our hands in the air. Yes, it's, it's all part of it. We, we've, we, we come to the acknowledgement that God has done so much for us and we, we are overwhelmed by his love, overwhelmed by the things that he, by the protection that he's, he's given us, by the love that he's shown us. And so, yes, we throw our hands up in the air and we, we, we worship him, but worship worshiping him more with our entire lives amen i believe that god desires that honor comes straight from our hearts and when we delight in god and when we seek him in everything that we do in all of our ways and when we make choices that really reflect the position that he holds and the value that he holds in our lives i believe that that is when we bring him the greatest honor um the next group that god asks asks us to um, honor is our parents. It is our parents. Um, Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. It says, honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. So that you may live um, long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. So I'm gonna address the parents first, right? To the, to the parents. We are not called to be our child's friend. We are not called to be our child's friend. Yes, 
There is um, a place for friendship. There's a place for joy in the home. There's a place for laughter. There's a place for playing. There's a place for all of that, but primarily it's not our calling to be our child's friend. Our calling and our primary focus is for us to raise them in the truth of God's word. That's, that's primarily what we have been called to do. We've been called to raise our children in the truth of God's word. We are called to be an authority to them. We are called to impart life to them. We are called um, to show them how to be respectful. We are called to be able to show them how to really honor one another, how to honor people. Let's give them a firm foundation to, to stand upon. Um, because you know, one day each and every one of us as parents are gonna give an account to God on how we raise these children. So yes, it's nice to be there, there to be nice to them, to be friendly with them, but we're not primarily called to be their friend. We have a responsibility over them. Um, so we are called to raise them in the truth of God's word. Amen. Now to the children, whether young or old, all of us are children here. Um, I know, you know, maybe some of you cringed when you heard the word honor your parents, or maybe there was like a little bit of regurgitation <laughs> that came up when you heard honor your parents. Um, because let's be, let's be real, right? There's not every parent-child relationship that's an easy one. It's not every child or parent relationship that has had um, a very smooth, a very smooth running. Um, some of us have been broken, right? Some of us have been broken by um, our parents or we've come from broken homes or we've been abandoned or there's been abuse in the home. Whichever, whichever form that may have taken, it's not always an easy ride um, between parents and children. And, you know, while some people find the concept of honouring parents really simple, there are others who don't find it as, as simple. I think when you have been in a place of, of hurt, where you have been in a place of brokenness in the family, honouring your parents can be a very high calling and it can be very stretching to some. You know, some have to forgive really lifelong wounds that have, that have been there for, for some time. And that's okay. I hear you completely. I understand you and all of your feelings and the way that you feel is validated. But at the same time, it doesn't change the truth of God's word. We are to still honour our parents. And, you know, it's, it is a natural tendency to, to seek for retribution. It's a natural tendency to seek for a bit of revenge, like to feel like, oh, mm, I've got you back kind of thing. Um, but that's not, what, that's not what God is calling us to. Um, 1 Peter, from chapter 3, verse 9, it challenges us and it says, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. Amen. My husband says it loads of times. He always says that God reveals in order to redeem. God always reveals in order to redeem. And I really, really do believe that. I believe that if God is, is revealing something to us, it's because he wants to teach us something. I believe it's because he wants to give us his truth in order to break all those chains of bondage, of, of captivity that we've been held by for so long. So he gives us um, his truth. And I believe that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to love those that we, we personally feel that they don't deserve it. We're able to love those who we feel don't deserve it. So beyond forgiving parents for past hurts, <clears throat> what does an honourable parent-child relationship look like? So it's things like avoiding slandering them. So avoid all, all forms of slander. Um, towards them. We can communicate with our parents respectfully, right? We may be able to, dis um, we may not agree with everything that they do, but we can communicate with them respectfully. Um, we can pray for them. We can pray for our parents. They need, they need prayers. Um, a lot of people are raised children in the way that they know, in the only way that they know. They're people that have come from broken homes themselves. And so it's kind of become 
a pattern so you can only so they are raising children out of what they know not because they are in, there intentionally to hurt their child um, so it's a matter of just praying for them pray for them um, and then next we can take care of their needs whether that's physical emotional social um, or their well-being especially as they age honoring God um, honoring our parents I believe is another form of us honoring God. Amen? Amen. All right. Um, so the next group that we are asked to honor is marriage or the institution of marriage. Um, Hebrews 13 verse 4, it says, give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. Give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. And that faithfulness is not just talking about um, stepping stepping out of the marriage so affairs and stuff but it's been remaining faithful in who you guys were to each other at the beginning remaining faithful in your speech remaining faithful in your attitudes toward towards one another remaining faithful in love towards one another now for those of you who are married you know that marriage isn't peanuts it's not an easy feat it's not um, an easy task and it takes a lot of work to make it work um and it could be that maybe marriages have started off really, really well and really, really strong. Um, you know, maybe you both wined and dined each other. For the men, maybe you used to compliment her. You were used to taking her out. Wives, maybe you, you used to greet your husband when he came home with a kiss. You used to tell him how good he smelled and how good he looked. You know, you used to just really build him up and tell him how much you, you admired him. But over sometimes, maybe that, um, maybe that has, has kind of dwindled and maybe your marriage has kind of just become a bit common. Marriages break when they are devalued. Marriages break when they are treated as common, when they're treated as ordinary. Um, I heard a, a story not too long ago about a couple who had gone on a double date with another a set of friends of theirs really that they were also trying to help so this couple were going through um, some challenges but they had you know they had taken the time to go out with them and help them and just try to nurse their marriage back to full life and back to health um, and these friends of theirs started off in marriage really well so they had been married for quite some time they started off having a really good marriage but after some time things started to dwindle a bit and things started to kind of break down communication started breaking down so this man talks about how the wife of this of the other guy just at the dinner table just started really laying into him like really pulling him down and oh you never do this and you do that and blah 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 so it was just a really really awkward situation and the guy says that he was just there kind of like oh what am i gonna do it's a bit awkward um, and then the wife steps in and she looks at this other woman that is tearing down her husband um, and she says to him, do you know that since we've been here, all you've done is just tear down this man over and over again. Like you need to cut it off. You need to stop now. To which the friend, because she wasn't about to have any of it, said, well, if my husband was one-tenth the man that your husband is, then maybe I would honour him. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the other, the other lady now says to her, she was like, mm -mm, I'm not having this, not today. We're going to shut this whole thing down <laughs> now. And she turns around and she says to her, well, maybe my husband is the man he is today because I've been honouring him since the day we met right so it, it, it just goes to show that we we can look at a situation and think wow they have something beautiful and my husband's not living up to the standard of your husband or you know we start to compare but what are we doing to honor our, our spouses and that goes for men and for women what are we doing to honor our spouses what are we doing to to build up our relationships to build up our marriages Marriages break when they are devalued, treated as common and as ordinary. Amen. So it's very simple. If you want a common relationship, if you want an ordinary marriage, go ahead and just be dishonorable. 
Go ahead and speak to your husband or your wife any way you like. It, it's fine. Go ahead. But if you want a marriage that lasts, if you want a marriage that is built on God's truth, if you want a marriage that is special, then heed God's word and start honouring one another above yourself. Honour one another above yourself. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it's not always easy, I know. It's not always easy. Um, sometimes, you know, we, we don't always have um, people that are easy to deal with, right? It's not always easy, but it takes intentionality. And I think the mistake that we sometimes make, and I've made it myself, is um, that we confuse the word honour with the word respect. We confuse the two of them. We normally think that um, I will start honouring this person once that person honours me. But honour isn't something that is earned. Respect is earned. Respect is earned, but honour is something that we give. We give honour. And honour is a heart's posture. It's the a, it's, it's a posture of our hearts. Um, and it's the humility to say, God, because I love you, because I respect you, because I understand that you created this person, because I understand the love that you have for this person, I choose to honour this person, even though they're not acting honourably towards me right now, I choose to honour this person because I know that through my honouring of them, I'm actually honouring you. Amen. Amen. Um, the next group of people that we are asked to honour is our fellow believers, our fellow believers. So that's the people that are in this room, people who, who believe in Christ, people who are part of the family of Christ. The scripture says that we are to honour one another above ourselves. And when we do this, we are demonstrating, um, we are demonstrating love, love which may come at a price to our own um, pride and our own desires and our own wants. The Bible is very clear on it. Um, the book of Galatians 6, uh, verse 10, it says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So we're to do good to everyone, but especially those who belong to um, the family of believers. Again, in, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, um, verses 1 to 3, it says, Never speak harshly to an older man, but appeal to him respectfully as you would to your own father. Talk to younger men as you would to your own brothers. Treat older women as you would your mother. And treat younger women with all purity as you would your own sisters. Take care of any widow who has no one else to care for her. So we are to honour one another. We are to honour our church family. We are to, to love our church family, amen? It is important. It's important for us to look after one another and treat one another in high regard, in high esteem. As we learned earlier, when, we're, when we are honourable to um, those who are believers, our, our neighbours, um, the ones that are sitting next to you, we are building them up. We don't know what they've gone through during the week or during the month or even the whole year, um, but we, we start building ourselves up we start treating ourselves as valuable as precious because we were all bought with the same price right we were all bought with the blood of Jesus and that gives that makes us precious in God's sight and it should make us precious in one another's sight as well and um, the next group of people that we are taught to um, honor are those who are in authority those who are in authority um, so that's talking about our our leaders our prime minister um, the king, we're to honour all of them. Um, so whether we voted them in or not, whether we agree with their policies or not, um, we are to honour them and we are to pray for them. It's the right thing to do. We can disagree with them, but we can disagree with them respectfully without being dishonourable. Um, the next group and the last group of people that I'm going to talk about today um, is to honour our pastors and our spiritual leaders. We are to honour our pastors and our spiritual leaders. 1 Timothy 5.17, it says, The elders who are good leaders are to be considered worthy of double honour, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. 
So it says that they are, are worthy of double honour. We are to honour them. Amen. Yes, that does include our pastors, most definitely. Um, but it also includes our teachers, right? Um, teachers that serve in the kids' room. It includes our life group leaders. It includes all of those who stand up and who make the time to really teach us God's word day after day or week after week. Those who are putting in all effort, those who have arranged, um, for example, the men's breakfast that we had last week, they are all helping to, to push forward the gospel and they are worthy of double honor. Amen. So we are to honor each and every one of them. Um, so why is it that honour matters so much? Why, do you, why, why is it that honour matters? Why does God see honour as such a huge and such a weighty thing? Um, honour matters not just because it is the right thing to do, but also because being dishonourable also hurts you. Being dishonourable also hurts you. Um, I want us to look at a very short verse um, from the book of Mark, chapter 6, from verses 4 to 5. Um, this was Jesus talking to um, his, his own people. So he had travelled and he had gone back to his hometown, to where he was born and where he was raised. Um, and he says, Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honour except in his own town, among his relatives and in his own home. It says he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Amen. Notice that it doesn't say that he would not do anything, but he could not do anything. He could not do anything. Um, if we read in the chapters before, so if you go back when you go home, when, it, when you get the chance, read the chapter beforehand. Um, we know that Jesus can do miracles and he could do miracles right yeah. um, in the chapters beforehand Jesus had performed two defining miracles the first one he performed was the healing of the lady with the issue of blood who the woman had she had been bleeding for 12 years straight he had just performed a miracle on her and she was healed he also um, raised uh, Jairus's daughter from the dead so those are two defining miracles that Jesus we know was able to do. But it says that he could not do any miracles there. He could not do any miracles there. And why do we think that is? Um, the thing that I believe made the difference was one, faith, and then um, two, the fact that the people that he had gone to didn't honor him. Here were people who had been waiting for their Messiah for hundreds, thousands of years, but when they finally saw him, they didn't recognize him as Messiah. They recognized him as Joseph's son, Joseph and Mary's son, the carpenter's son. That's who they saw him as. They didn't see him as anything more than that. So they treated him as ordinary. They treated him as common. And because they just saw him as an ordinary person, as a commoner, he wasn't able to do much there. He was limited. And it makes me feel or think, what limitations are we placing on God? What limitations do we place on God? How many blessings or how many answered prayers and breakthroughs or miracles have we missed out on just because we have lacked honor? How many things have we missed out on just because we've lacked honor? And just because we've treated the word of God as ordinary, We've treated the word of God as common. Just have a think about it. The Bible teaches us to honor one another above yourselves. But above all else, we are to honor God with our entire lives. Amen. Let's be on our feet as um, I round this off. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13. It says, these people draw near to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. These people draw near to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. God doesn't want our lip service. He wants our heart. And he is so eager to bless us. He's so eager to deliver. 
He's so eager to lift us up. He's so eager to heal us. He's so eager to, to cleanse us and to renew us and to really give us um, a purpose and a new way of living. But we have to be all in. We have to be all in and we have to honour him completely with our lives. We have to learn how to cultivate an attitude of honour. Let's cultivate honour in, in, our, in our churches, in our marriages, in our families. Let's honour one another because that's what we have been called to do. Amen. Amen. Let's just close our eyes and let's just think about that. Let the word of God sink into your hearts. In Jesus name mm -hmm. yeah. Amen I believe that God is here this morning and he wants to do a work in your hearts he wants to do a work in your minds I don't know what from the message has touched you but you know you know where maybe you've lacked a bit of honour. You know, maybe you've lacked honour in your homes. Maybe you've been dishonourable to your spouse. Maybe you've been dishonourable to your parents. Maybe you've been dishonourable to God himself. But the word of God is true, amen. Yeah, and maybe you're here and you... And you, you kind of feel like um, there's so much in there in that message. And if you just feel unworthy, it's like maybe God was, you know, throwing all sorts of things and you feel like, oh God, where do I start from? What's going to be my response now? Like, I kind of feel short. I, I fall short in many ways. I just get that sense that there may be one or two people here who feel like they are not, how do, how do they start? Where do they start from? I would just say it starts with a decision. It starts with a decision. And as I was sitting there, I was playing that song in my mind. You know, that song that says that he's restoring me piece by piece. Piece by piece. And I feel like God, God wants to restore some of you here today, piece by piece, as you make a decision to begin to honor him in one way or the other. And I want you to step into that. Step, step into that. Step into that. Make a decision today that you are going to respond in that way. And for some of you, it may be that. As you go through this week, you are going to put yourself in small groups and open up and ask for help and ask for support and be vulnerable. And that way, God begins to restore you and you become healed. Amen. I also feel that God is saying to one or two people here to be secure in your identity in Christ. Be secure in your identity in Christ. You cannot get any security from anything else other than Jesus. And you've got to be all him, all him, all him, all him. And I think we should respond. Let's respond to this message. And you may be responding with a decision, you may be responding with a prayer right now. Yeah. Everybody responding, you may be responding by just talking to God. Prayer is conversation with God. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to know how to recite some lines. Just talk to God. How do you feel right now? Yeah. Everybody close your eyes and just talking to God. Let's, let's take this time to respond. Yes. Let's take this time to respond. I feel like God has spoken to us. Now is the time to respond. Every one of us, Father God, who are feeling anxious or are feeling in no way, we need to despond of God. Father Lord, would you heal, would you deliver in the name of Jesus? Father Lord, would you teach us how to be honorable? Would you teach us who we speak, God? How to be honorable? Father, we give you our hearts, we give you our lives, we give you our souls. And we pray from this place, from this moment, there will be decisions that will Amen. change and shape people's destinies. Amen. Thank you for the work you're doing. And we pray, God, that you help us to take it to the next step one. You know, plug ourselves into small groups, plug ourselves into Bible study tomorrow, plug ourselves into communities in this church that will push us into the reality of your dream for our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be here or online, you want to give your life to Jesus. Uh, maybe you do not know Jesus. Or you want to rededicate yourself to Jesus. You want to come back to Jesus. I want to make all things new. I hope you don't feel judged in any way. 
um, or you kind of just receive. Step forward and receive the word, the word of God and life of God. So maybe you're here today, you want to make that decision. Maybe you're here online. I like you to just lift up your right hand as we pray together to, to hand this message. Yeah, if you want to do it online or, or in this place. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's really nice to see people stepping uh, and, 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 and lifting up their hands. Online, you want to do it as well. We're going to pray together. Then you want to pray over, over these people in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father Lord, we just want to thank you, Father, for every life and every soul that is here. We thank you, Father, for those who have taken the bold step to lift up their hands, to rededicate themselves to you or to give you their lives for the first time. Lord Jesus, we pray for your strength upon them. We pray, Father, for your blessing to be upon them. We pray for your guidance, your wisdom, your light to be upon them in the name of Jesus. We ask, Father Lord, that as they have made this decision, oh Jesus Christ, would you walk side by side with them, oh God? Would you lead them in the paths that they should go? Father Lord, would you open their eyes to new things? Would you open their hearts, Father Lord, to your great love, to your redemptive power? in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, may they become secure in their identity of who you are in Jesus' name. Father Lord, we just want to thank you. We, we love you, Father. We, we honour you in this moment, Holy Spirit, by lifting up our hands to you, O oh God, and saying that we declare that you are king and that you are the ruler of our lives, that we take off anything and everything that has been on the throne of our hearts that has not been you, and that we place you in in, in your rightful spot in this moment. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We worship you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can we say thank you to the Thank you to God. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen. We receive it in Jesus' name. In the coming weeks, coming months,